Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, my name is Neil Sutcliffe, uh, garden designer and uh, MD here at Creative Roots, uh, based in Nottingham, UK. Um, today we're going to be carrying on with the series on uh, what is garden design and we get to the initial consultation. Um, originally when I was thinking about what we were going to talk about today, uh, I had thought we'd dive in with the client brief, but actually uh, quickly realised that um, from the very early, early stage of uh, when somebody first calls up, I'm already starting to gather information and this actually helps formulate the garden design um, at a later stage. Um, when somebody first calls up uh, and they get put through to me or I, I answer the phone and they say that they're looking for a garden design, um, I, I start off really by qualifying them. Um, this is a process where I'm making sure that we're, 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 it's, it's worth their time and energy and mine as well. Um, I've had it in the past where somebody's called up and they've had a budget of £500, which clearly isn't going to justify uh, design work. So um, over the years, I've realised that actually that, that first initial consultation is really important to make sure um, that we're, we're, we're going to be able to work together. Um, so when they first call up, it tends to uh, start with them uh, instantly wanting to tell me all about their garden, what they have in, in mind for it, or the, uh, it, sometimes it, it, it might, they might turn around and sort of say, oh, I know roughly what I want, but I just want a little bit of creative input. Um, either way, it tends to be the same sort of scenario in that you've got somebody who knows roughly what they want. For instance, they might want a pergola, they might want a patio, they like barbecuing. They've got a rough idea they want a lawn for the kids that kind of stuff but they've got no idea how to put it together okay and that's where we come in um, and this can uh, this, this initial consultation can be a really good fact finder to not only understand a little bit more about what they want from the garden but also their personality and how um, open they are to ideas uh, whether or not they're they're, they're quite a, a force to be reckoned with and I want this I want that or whether or not they're, they're very much more open and relaxed um, and I tend to make notes on that basis. So when we actually go and see them in the client brief, um, we've got a really good start and I know how to potentially handle um, that, in, uh, that individual. And as part of this uh, initial sort of phone call, um, we can also start prompting them to think about things, which is again, really helpful when we actually step through the door um, to meet them properly. If they've already had time to think a little bit about certain things that they might not really have considered prior to um, uh, uh, us talking to them. So uh, we, I guess we get chatting, what do you want? Is it front garden, is it back garden? I let them give me some ideas of what they're looking for if, uh, if, if, if they have some. Um, and at this point, one of the really important things to uh, discuss before we go any further is budget. Uh, I alluded to that earlier when I'm saying that some people uh, perhaps have slightly um, uh, skewed ideas about what their money might get for them. Um, and if somebody's rattling off about, oh, I want an outdoor kitchen and I want this big waterfall and we're looking for a hot tub and all that, um, it's really important, um, or even if it's just a basic sort of uh, garden that they're looking for, it's really important that I get a rough idea of what they're thinking about. Now, sometimes they might not have a clue, you know, and that's perfectly reasonable. You know, they're not in the industry. They might they might work in a bank or something. How, how on earth would they know how much to expect for a, for a new patio or, or, or outdoor kitchen? Um so there's a bit of education that needs to happen here, um, but also it's uh, really important that we talk about budget so that uh, they can talk to uh, whoever else is involved in the process. Clearly, I'm only going to be talking to one person over the phone, and maybe they they live with their partner uh, or somebody else who's contributing, and um, uh, they need to have that conversation before I get there. Oh, we need to think about this because Neil said if we're thinking about an outdoor kitchen, we probably ought to be thinking in the region of five to twenty thousand pounds just for that, and I thought that'd be enough for the whole garden. You know, so it's managing expectations more than anything. Um, but uh, as I say, by talking about budget, um, you often get a good feel for things. If somebody sort of turns around and goes, well, oh, I don't really want to talk about that, or I don't know, we have to be a bit more vague. Um, after all, we're British, we don't like talking about money. Um, my, um, what I found tends to work, and my, my sort of angle with this is I tend to sort of say, look, I don't need to know now necessarily what you want. Um, and actually you don't have to give me an exact figure, it's just a range, you know, are you thinking 20 to 30,000, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, something like that, just so you can have a bit of a think. Just, just mentioning those numbers like I did just then, that helps qualify them. If they suddenly balk, uh, or if they suddenly look rather shocked, uh, and, and, and quite often people will say, oh, I wasn't quite thinking that much, I was, I was thinking probably, uh, and, and, and then they may come out and sort of say, well, I'm thinking more like 10,000 pounds. 
that's great because then I can sort of talk to them about that and say, look, realistically, with that kind of budget, you, you, you're going to be spending a tenth of that maybe on the design fees. And um, actually, if we're only working with a, a, a budget of, of sort of £10,000, a full garden design might not be um, the most cost effective or the, or the best way you can get the most out of your garden. Um, <clears throat> a good garden design is going to be a little bit limited if all we're doing is a lawn and some flower beds and in which case we might just suggest a planting plan or something like that. Um, but again, by talking about these numbers, it allows them to start thinking about things and quite often I'll turn up at the appointment and I'll say, oh, well, we were thinking this, but actually when we were talking it through, uh, we thought we could probably stretch to that. Um, and that's a really helpful process. And as I said uh, a moment ago, I, I, I did sort of mention uh, a fee there, I might say a tenth, but that, that, that's not really uh, how we work on our fee structure. Um, but quite often people will ask about fees over the telephone. Um, my advice here is probably just not to get too bogged down on that. Um, it's very difficult to be able to give somebody fees when you haven't even spoken to them in depth about what they're looking for or what their garden looks like or you know, if, if, if we're dealing with a massively sloping site and they're talking about cutting into it with a budget of £100,000, then clearly there's going to be a huge amount of work and we need to very carefully calculate the sort of time elements that we're going to be uh, needing to work on that. Um, and so we have to be careful because if we commit ourselves to, to, to a percentage fee, for instance, um, uh, as I say, a £100,000 garden on a very sloping site might take quite a bit more work than £100,000 on a very flat site. Um, regardless, uh, I, do, I do sort of say to them that 10% uh, is a very, very good ballpark range, but uh, I will uh, work out the fees uh, once I come out to see you. Um, and quite often they are going to be different to that, but if, if you want to know the sort of average for a garden designer, that helps them, again, uh, set their expectations so they're not coming out thinking that it's going to be a 250 quid um, option here. Um, and, and therefore that you, you're going to be wasting your time. And we do get quite a few customers that, that, that when they hear the fees, they go, oh, crikey, I, I, that's ridiculous. I can't, I wanna. But it's because they don't understand what we do. They don't really appreciate the sort of level um, that we're going to go into. And also I like to point out um, when people talk about fees is actually a good garden designer should save you their fees in the landscaping costs the very uh, fact that we're going to plan everything from the the height of the steps and the uh, and the run and the amount of the size of the concrete pad that's going on it's going to save so much time for the landscape no more standing around scratching the head for several days um, and also they're going to get a much better product for it and for actually a relatively s small percentage of what they're spending um, they're going to get so much better product and i think it's really important that um, we don't devalue our industry uh, or what we do um, by simply again going back to this idea of where it's just a pretty picture and then we work out how to build it on site which is really 250 quid or that's, that, that, that's all you're going to get. Okay so um, we've spoken to the customer over the phone and uh, they say yeah you know what we really like to see you um, let, 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 would you come out and see me uh, and I sort of say yeah we'll, we'll pop out have a look at the garden we'll talk a bit more about cost and we can go through what's possible what's not possible that sort of thing so we, we've booked that in. Um, Prior to agreeing that, you need to decide as a designer whether or not you're going to charge for that initial consultation. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this one. Some people do. Um, some people say it's a good way of already qualifying again to make sure that somebody's serious. Personally, I, I, I would rather spend more time on the phone qualifying them and then not charge them because I don't want to put them off before I even get there. And as I say, a lot of people don't really understand what we do until I've had a good opportunity to talk them through that. Um, but again, uh, it does depend on how far you're travelling. Obviously, a lot of my work is, is very central to Nottingham, so realistically, the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to waste an hour. Um, and as I say, if I qualify them right, I, I'm, I'm personally, I've decided I'm happy with that risk. Um, but if you're travelling a little bit further, or if you know you're going to be spending a lot of time with somebody, then obviously you might choose to at least cover your fuel and maybe a little bit of your time. The only caveat I'd say with that is beware that um, I want to pick you, uh, your ideas, uh, clients. You will meet them and you will have them and you will miss them on the qualification side of things where th those people who just want you to come out so they can go, oh, I was thinking about having a pond. Where do you think it's going to be the best place? And what do you think we should do with this border here? And what's that plant there? And actually all they're doing is they're, 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 they're plugging for your ideas and, and, and trying to quiz you and use you as a bit of a consult free consultant. Um, uh, with no intention of, of, of using you as a garden designer. Um, 
I, I don't think there's a way of getting around those people. Yes, by charging you an, in, uh, uh, charging an initial consultation fee, you, you may finally get rid of them, but actually some people will still see that as good value. Um, I've done it in the past where I had to go quite a long way away and I, I, I simply charged her for my fuel and, um, uh, and half an hour of my time. Um, and when I got there, it was very clear that's exactly what she was doing and she was quite happy to pay the sort of 60, 70 pounds just to, to take up an hour of my time. Um, and I probably wouldn't have sort of wanted to go for that had I known that was the case. Um, but you're going to find that uh, yourself and, and you're going to work out how to deal with that in, in, as part of your experience uh, becoming a designer. Okay, so we've turned up at the appointment and um, uh, we, we, we found the house where we're going to go. Uh, I'd like to turn up about five minutes early uh, when I go out and see people. Um, this gives me a bit of an opportunity to have a bit of a drive up and down the road, see what, what are the other gardens doing, what are the houses looking like, you know, has anybody got uh, really interesting front gardens, uh, are people spending a lot of money in the area on, on, on their fronts, if, if, if we don't know the area that is. Um, also gives me an opportunity to look at the client's house. So I can uh, pick up on a few things, maybe the architecture, um, when I get to see them, uh, knock on the door, um, uh, we get chatting, I can be like, oh, I really like the aluminium guttering you've got, or uh, you've got a beautiful magnolia out front, do you like that kind of thing? It, it, it helps build that initial consultation uh, and the conversation uh, from the get-go. Um, and I get a bit of a feel for um, the person as well. Um, again, you're gonna be doing this in more depth uh, when, we, when we do the brief. Um, but uh, as this initial consultation goes, it's a great opportunity to start that process. So we get in, um, sit down maybe at the table or maybe we might walk straight out into the garden. Um, I tend to find that um, I'll ask a couple of quick questions and then the client will quite often start unloading on me in terms of what they want from the garden. You know, oh, well, we thought we'd really wanted a patio or we want this, we want that. And, you know, you, 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 it, it's unlikely you're gonna be able to get an, a word in edgeways. This is great, you know, you want them to unload because the thing is, if you start trying to control that conversation or talk to them, I think what you'll probably find is they're not gonna to listen to you. They're, they're, they're wanting to get their point across. They, they want to tell you about that water feature that they've been dreaming of that they saw at RHS Chelsea Flower Show last year and how they want something similar. Um, and, and as I say, by letting them unload, I don't think you necessarily need to listen to everything or, or, or um, sorry, you do need to listen to everything, but you don't need to necessarily make lots of notes or, or, or really absorb what they're saying because it's probably gonna be going 100 mile an hour. They're probably gonna wanna get it all out off their chest. Um, but by doing that, then you might pick up on a few things um, uh, that you can then sort of relate back to. Um, once they've done that and, and, and you're sort of able to get a word in, um, is at that point that you can start just plugging for a few things that might, might, might be important. So for instance, do you want that patio to come straight out off, off those doors? Um, can I just confirm that uh, you recognize that you're gonna need planning permission for that because of the height? You know, we can, we, can, we can start plugging ideas. Do you like the trees that you've got in the garden? What about that boundary? Is, is, is that something you want to incorporate? You're just trying to get a bit of a rough overview. Again, you're gonna be doing a client brief, so uh, there's gonna be another meeting after this one that you're gonna be able to get a lot more information from. But if you can kind of get a rough idea, then that helps. Um, and then we can start suggesting things as well. And just sort of, again, picking ideas. You know, oh, you say you like an outdoor kitchen, but whereabouts are you thinking about having that? Oh, you want it down at the bottom of the garden? Probably gonna need a fridge, so we're gonna need power down there. You recognize that. And again, this is where we start talking about budget in a bit more depth. So okay, yeah, you want lighting. Uh, what sort of, uh, you recognize sort of what sort of budget we really need something between two and 10,000 pounds, depending on the type of lighting you want. Um, and almost at this point, I tend to sort of make a few notes of the very basic elements and then put some nominal figures next to them. And then I can sort of present that at the end of that conversation as sort of, okay, well, you want this, 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 this. That's roughly coming in at about 35,000 um, pounds. And then again, we can start refining that budget, okay. Uh, well, we didn't want to spend that much. We can manage their expectations at this point, um, or we might sort of help them to recognize that it's worth more than they thought it was, and so actually it's worth uh, them finding a little bit more in their savings. So once we've talked about budget, and um, uh, they, we, we, we managed to scrape them back off the ceiling, and, and they're on the same page as us, um, you should have realized now whether or not you want to work for these people as well, you know, uh, and you probably aren't going to want to work for everybody. So uh, that's, that's something that's worth bearing in mind. This initial consultation, you haven't been instructed, you don't have to work for them. 
Um, but if you think you're on the right wavelength and uh, you, you, you know that they've got the right sort of budget and you want to work with them because you like their ideas, they like your ideas, how you now go from here is, is, is up to you uh, as an individual. Do you think that you, you, you want to try and close that and, and get them to instruct you there and then? Or uh, do you think you want to sort of go away and leave them to think about it? Um, I'm not really keen on hard sell. I don't think I'm a salesman, although um, this is really a sales appointment that we're doing. Um, so I uh, quite often will say towards the end of uh, the conversation, look, I hope, obviously I hope you found this really helpful. Um, what I'll do is I'll confirm everything we talked about as well as my fee uh, structure in, in, in a proposal. Um, and then if you want to come back to me and let me know what you think, then uh, we, we can get the ball rolling as of well, two weeks or whatever you want to say, depending on your availability. Um, sometimes they might say, yeah, you know, we want to go for this. We really want to go ahead. So send your proposal out as soon as possible. You kind of know then that you're going to be working for them. So you can kind of gear up. Equally, um, not everybody um, is necessarily going to uh, want to work with you. Some people might have called you out as well as other landscapers. There's going to be a few out there that don't charge for garden design. They're not going to offer the same thing as you. Um, and that's part of the education process is, is, is helping them to recognise that. But not everybody's going to want to go go ahead. Um, I think then uh, at, at this stage it gives you that opportunity to cut the meeting short and uh, to, to not spend too much time. I never ever measure up or do anything more than simply have that chat in this initial consultation. And then by sending the proposal through, you can, like, you can lay out exactly how you're going to work and they can make that call. And then if they do instruct you, you're on board. We know, everybody knows what they're doing uh, and, it's, and it's a really great process. As I say, this really is a bit of a sales meeting, but it's also um, a, a fact find um, so that you, you will make that client brief meeting and moving forward a lot easier. Um, you'll have already met the dog, you know, you'll know what the garden uh, looks like. You'll have seen how the neighbour parks their car. You can already start to formulate the questions that are going to go into your brief before you get there. Um, so it's not such a cold meeting, you know. Um, but as I say, uh, you've also got to persuade them that um, uh, they want to work with you. Okay, that's it really. Um, as I say, that's your initial consultation over with. Um, I hope you win it and I hope um, you go on to uh, a very prosperous uh, design fee. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more now. Next one's probably going to be client brief, as I say. Um, but we're going to be going through the whole design process over the coming weeks. Um, so do hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss anything. And as always, if you've got something out of today, um, give me a like so I know I'm not waffling on uh, for the sake of it. Uh, talk to you all very soon. Take care.